In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to install factory projector headlights on one of these Ram pickup trucks. So let's get straight into this video. All right guys, so here we are. We've got one of these factory projector headlights. There's a lot of replicas of these things. These are true OEM ones. I'll show you guys in just a second. I picked these up not too long ago because I wanted to show you guys how to install them on one of these trucks. If your truck was a lower trim level and you're looking to put a factory touch on it and get some of these projector headlights on here. All right, so first things first, we're in the new shop. We're just getting organized and stuff. And I don't have toolboxes yet, so I just laid out my toolkit on the bench, but we are getting underway and back to work. So one way, if you guys are shopping, that you can tell if they're replicas or knockoffs is look for this. You'll see Ram right in the lens here, and you'll also see this logo here, this Dodge or Ram head logo right there and that'll let you know that they're actually factory ones um if you guys haven't seen the video of having lens fog and dealing with that i'll link it above here you guys can click on it these headlights i purchased because some guy went crazy trying to prevent them from fogging up but anyways i got them because i wanted to show you guys how to convert your vehicle so when i flip this around you guys will see what's going on here so you'll notice the plug on the back it has one of these large uh like d-shaped plugs but you're gonna see a different set of pigtails and namely more than just one on your actual truck. So you're gonna need conversion harnesses. Fortunately, unfortunately, there's not too many guys that are making them at this point. Um, I've seen conversion harnesses that go like from this D-shaped plug back to these because some of the guys that have like a Laramie truck or truck that has factory projectors, they wanna go back to this style. But as far as you know, upgrading, going from the multi-plug style to this D-shape, there's not too many people that uh, offer them the making of this video i found a company that sells them for like 80 dollars a side so you're going to look at about 150 dollars to convert this and we're going to talk a little bit more at the end of this video on what i think you should do if you're trying to get this factory projector style headlight um, but let's get straight to work and get into it so you're not going to need many tools for this job you're going to need either a flat or one of these pry tools a clip tool um, i'll link these these are really handy actually because pretty much all vehicles these days have those push pins and this makes it a breeze and you're going to need a 10 mil socket so you just need those two things then we can jump straight into it so once you pop the hood you're typically going to have a big plastic shield here i have mine off already because i'm just in and out of here so often but it's just held on by a series of like christmas tree clips and you just pry them up pull them up you can actually see ones just chilling right here they're just these like Christmas tree style ones that you just pull straight up on. And then you're going to access the four bolts that hold the grill on. I'll also link the video up above on how to remove your grill properly without breaking any tabs. So check out that video. It's a very quick video on how to remove the grill. Uh, wanna keep this video straight and to the point, but if you're not familiar with it, don't just take this and yank it off the top. You'll snap all the tabs in the bottom. You wanna get in there and pop it out, but check out that video if you're not sure how to get it off. But also, some guys will argue that you don't have to take the grill off, but I think it's just easier. It's four bolts versus trying to stick a long extension down into there to get to that 10 mil and try to pop it out and get it around the grill. In my opinion, it's just faster and easier just to pop the grill off, but I'll leave that up to you guys. So with the grill off and out of the way, you're gonna expose this lower 10 mil bolt and this. So you're gonna take these two out and I'll show you guys what's next. Next up, you're gonna use your pry tool or a flat screwdriver and you're gonna remove this push pin. So you're gonna wanna pry up around the edge of it, slide that up, and that will open access to this door. But you're gonna reach up in here, and I'll show you guys in just a second, but there's a locking latch in here that you're gonna be pushing up to release the headlight, and then we can pull the headlight out. You're gonna have to give it a bit of a tug because there is a latch and like a little post here, but it comes straight out like that. Now have to give it a little firm tug like you saw there, and headlight is out, so now we can disconnect it. So this is the latch that I was explaining to you guys that you're reaching in to grab. So you can see here, it's got a larger rectangle. When it's in the down locked position, it closes down. So when you reach in here, you're trying to feel around for this L-shaped latch and you're trying to press it up like that so it opens up so that you can get this tab out from behind. So now this gets into the reason why I was saying you need the adapter harness is because you're gonna pull this apart and you're gonna see two plugs instead of one big D-shaped plug. So that's where the adapter harness comes in that converts it from these two into that one larger plug. And also pay attention to which one's which and if you're not sure how to get these off. So this red locking tab, normally it should be locked so it'll be 
in the upwards forward position, you'll have to slide it down and before you can actually squeeze this and release it. Um, but pay attention because one of them is gonna be for the marker light and the other one goes inside the headlight for the bulbs. So this goes in for your high beam, low beam, whereas this one is for your turn signal. So this one's a turn signal. This one's for our high beam, low beam. So just make sure you know which one's which and then we can get to work. So like I was mentioning here, you can see this one says low beam. So this one's for our high beam, low beam, whereas this one is gonna be for our turn signal. So we're gonna have to plug them in respectively and then it converts it into this. So let's go ahead and put this harness on. Plug this one into here. So we hear a click. Same thing with this one. Click. And now we have the correct harness for the headlight. So now we can grab our headlight. We can plug this plug, the larger plug, until we hear a click. And now that's in here. And then it's up to you how you want to fasten this. There is still the existing secure pins back here. So if you want to secure your harness back, you can put it back on the factory posts and then we can start to slide this in. All right, so you're gonna get your headlights and you're gonna push it in until you hear it kind of pop or click. And there's that ball joint socket that goes into there. And before we actually, or at least what I like to do is make sure that everything works. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll see that it works before we put our hardware back in. All right, we've got the running lights on so you can see there. Running lights are good. Let's test out our low beam, high beam, turn signal, all that stuff. All right, we've got the low beam on and working. Here we are with the high beams on and working. So there you go, we've got the projector on and we've also got the high beam running. And then last but not least, our turn signals. So there we go there. We've got our turn signals working and in good order right there. So next up, you're gonna put your two bolts in here. One quick note, see this here? Don't spin this base because this is actually an adjustment. So you, if you see the base of this kind of spinning, just know that you're adjusting it. So you don't wanna see this down here spinning. If it does start spinning, back it off or return it however many turns you think you spun it because it's going to change your adjustment with the bumper and everything too because this is adjustable. Or if you find that you don't like the adjustment, here's your adjustment right here. So you're gonna reach back in behind, make sure that your seam is nice and tucked in here. You reach in and you're gonna be pulling that tab back down like you guys saw and it'll lock it into place. So it's the same steps for the other side. I just wanna show you guys how to do that. Keep this video short, concise. Grill video will be linked above and down below if you wanna know how to take that off. Also, if you guys aren't sure how to take out the headlights exactly, I have a specific video on headlight removal as well, which I'll link up above here, or you can check it out down in the description for that link. So here's how it looks compared, you guys. So again, factory projector headlights and the quad headlight, the chrome version. So they do also make this in a chrome version, the factory projector headlights in chrome. So. Really personal preference. I think it really looks good on this. This is an improvement for sure. Um, but I just wanna show you guys how to get this done and how to install it. We are going to be putting some fancier headlights, which you'll see right there on this thing. But like I said, picked these up and at least wanted to show you guys how to get it done if you guys are interested in that. So comment down below what look you guys like better. You guys like this look better or this. I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me tell you guys what I would do if I was in your shoes though. So again, when you're shopping for headlights, if you wanna know, Ram logo there, Ram logo there. That means they're authentic. If you're shopping for these headlights and you wanna know if they're authentic, you can see down here, Mopar. So that's how you'll know and can tell what's what. But let me give you my honest opinion on what you should do. Okay, so if I'm doing this, you guys, I would say by the time you find a set of factory Mopar headlights and then buy the conversion kits, you're going to be spending an arm and a leg. They do offer the black housing projector headlights with the plugs that you already need on them for about $300 off Amazon, maybe a little bit cheaper. I'll link those down below. Personally, I'm not sure about the quality of the aftermarket ones, but you can also always get like an extended warranty. If you're trying to go for the most cost-effective route, I would probably go ahead and get the aftermarket ones. It's already gonna have the plugs you want 
versus trying to go the OEM route and trying to get adapter harnesses, you're gonna be way more expensive. And honestly, they look pretty much identical. The only difference is having that little RAM symbol inside and on the lens. But other than that, they look almost identical. So if you're trying to go the most cost-effective route, I would just go aftermarket. But I'll also link down below the adapter harnesses if you guys wanna go that route. Either way, let me know down below which way you guys prefer or which way you guys would get it done. I'll link everything that you guys need depending on which way you guys wanna go. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this content. Hit the subscribe button and check out all the other videos we got on this channel. We're also Hellcat swapping that truck. So stick around and we'll see you guys on the next video.